the fights we are having right now is do we have a government of the people for the people and by the people or is ours a government of the christians for the christians and by the christians that is our battle christian nationalism is an existential threat to our republic that is why i wrote the founding myth to destroy the identity that christian nationalists rely on by exposing and destroying their common well of lies and myths uh, christian nationalism is the idea that the united states was founded as a christian nation that we are based on judeo-christian principles and that we've strayed from that foundation right we've got to get back to our godly roots and they use that language of return to justify all manner of hateful and evil public policy and christian nationalism seized power in 2016. the best predictor of a trump voter in 2016 was thinking that the united states was founded as a christian nation that was better than them being a white evangelical it was better than any economic worries they might have uh, it, it, christian nationalism incorporates a lot of those different threads racism economic anxiety republicanism evangelicalism all of those into one sort of incestuous ideology and the fact that that was the best indicator of a trump voter should tell you that christian nationalism is not a scholarly debate about the founding of our country it is an attack on who we are christian nationalism is an attack on who we are the goal is to redefine america according to the christian nationalist identity and then to reshape our law accordingly they want to make it so that to be an American is to be a Christian, and to be a Christian is to be an American. And since a lot of you are in D.C., I want you to think back to June 1st, 2020. I know it seems like it was a decade ago, but try to cast your mind back to when Trump had peaceful protesters gassed, beaten, brutalized with rubber bullets so that he could walk to a church and pose with a Bible upside down, as it turned out. People protesting racial inequality, systemic racism, racism and policing, police brutality, they were gassed and beaten in a scene that harkened back. Right? Trump tra trampled each of the six rights protected in our First Amendment in an effort to align our government with his Christian nationalism. It was a haunting, despicable scene that re it really encapsulates so much of what is wrong and un-American with this sinister exclusionary movement. Now, the point of that malignant farcical stroll was to show that Trump and this nation are churched, that we are Bible believing and Bible beating, that we are a Christian nation and anyone who disagrees with us should be beaten and gassed. The point is to elevate one group above others. Again, the goal is to rewrite and redefine our constitution so that it creates two classes of people conservative Christians, Christian nationalists, and everyone else. Right? It's not just Christians and everyone else. It's got to be the right kind of conservative Christian and then everybody else. This is and has been the goal of Christian nationalism, to codify Christian privilege, to elevate Christians to the special favored class. Everybody else, second class citizens. Many Americans already know something about what it's like to be a second-class citizen, but that is the goal here. Their entire political and ideological reality is incredibly weak and vulnerable because it is based on historical distortions and lies. The problem that we face is that we need more than facts to fight back. We need better arguments, and that is the true purpose of the founding myth, to give you those better arguments, to utterly destroy this un-American political ideology. I want to give you new and better arguments. So the book is not simply a refutation of the idea that America is a Christian nation. Instead, I went deeper. I asked a question that lies at the heart of their claims to legitimacy. I asked, did Judeo-Christian principles positively influence the founding of the United States? And the answer to that question was no, they did not. America was not founded on Judeo-Christian principles. And it's a good thing because Judeo-Christian principles, and especially those that are central to the Christian nationalist identity, are thoroughly opposed to the principles on which the United States was built. 
the two systems differ and conflict to such a degree that, to put it bluntly, Christianity is un-American. So that is the argument that I make, that there are these two conflicting systems, that they have irreconcilable differences. That is the founding myth. The point is that America will never be a Christian nation because the moment it becomes a Christian nation, it will cease to be America. That is the argument that we need to be screaming from every rooftop and in every forum. America cannot be a Christian nation. Christian nationalism is incompatible, irreconcilable, antithetical to America.